So my name is Nathan Saylor. I'm uh, a family practice resident. I work at Munson Medical Center. I live here in Traverse City, Michigan, over by Long Lake. Uh, have two little boys and a third one on the way who are going to be my future hunting buddies. I'm looking forward to that. And then we have our two uh, labs. They have a male, Nugent. He's a British lab from a breeder down in Tennessee. And my female, Benelli. She's uh, an American Standard Lab, a, a breeder over near uh, McBain. I started hunting when I was just a little kid, going with my dad. Um, when I was 12 years old, I shot my first deer with a bow, and I was hooked ever since then. Uh, when we moved up to Traverse City about five years ago, I kind of didn't have as much time for bow hunting. Uh, there wasn't as many deer to find, but there were lots of birds. Um, there was partridge, grouse, ducks, the whole, or, excuse me, grouse and ducks and woodcock, and so I got more into the upland bird hunting. Uh, the favorite part is really seeing them in the woods, like getting to see the fruits of your labors, um, watching them learn with you, uh, and seeing them kind of pick up things. I remember one time where we'd been working and the dogs had really kind of gotten into the pole bird thing. This is their first year. And I watched them as they kind of learned each other and how to work as a team to find birds. I mean, that was really cool to see just the dogs learn um, in addition to, to to the training that they'd received of you know me being able to heal them or to stop them in command. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so ba basically the, the goal is to, through the summertime, you know, you hunt pretty hard during the fall. They get exposure to birds, but I don't want them to get bored. I want them to keep that those scents in their mind and get them exposed to birds and get them excited every time they find a wing. And now at this point, the drills are very monotonous for them. They've done a lot of drills. They'll kind of go through them, but there's no excitement. So adding a wing here and there uh, throughout the week just kind of keeps them on edge and keeps them sharp. So basically what we do is I put them uh, at the front of the house or the back of the house, and I'll have them sit where their vision is obstructed and I'll walk to the opposite end of the house, the house is kind of in between us, and under a tree or a brush or even in the middle of the yard I'll throw a wing, a bird wing. So it'll be a woodcock or a partridge wing or a duck wing, um, pheasant wing sometimes. And then I'll come back to the, either come back to the where they're at and direct them and just say find the bird and then they'll go running to the front of the house and they'll work the scent cones until they finally locate the bird. And that's generally how the dogs will work. Um, another interesting thing about dogs is if you watch them, they never follow. If you're like tracking a pheasant in the snow, for example, the dog doesn't usually run in a straight line after the pheasant. Sometimes they will, but most of the time uh, they'll actually kind of go about 10 feet back and forth because they're catching this cone of scent that moves uh, around where the bird was running. And so when you watch them work a scent, they'll kind of do a circular pattern as they're catching more scent and the circle will get tighter and tighter until they lock in on where the bird is at. So that's the kind of the principle is just to allow them to work scent, keep scent fresh in their mind and keep them excited about continuing to train and get better. Yeah, so use a whistle, and this is because in the woods, if you're hunting with a lot of guys, there's a lot of talking, and sometimes the dogs can't hear you as well. Um, a lot of times it's kind of, I use when I'm hunting, actually, a lot of combination of the whistle and talking. Um, they respond to commands like uh, stop, hear, which is come, heal, uh, fetch dead, find the bird. Those are all, those all mean something to the dogs. They know what each of those commands mean. Um, what the whistle allows me to do is, without having to talk, if you were to do dog trials, for example, you're not allowed to talk to the dog in some of the trials. And so you blow the whistle, this is a stop command. It's a short, single blast. And the dogs are supposed to instantly stop and sit. And they should do that whether they're next to you, next to me healing, or whether they're out in the middle of the field, or if they're, uh, when they're young, you want them to do this if, when they're still learning birds, you know, the first time they're gonna find a deer, they're gonna chase after it, and so you want them to stop. And being able to blow that whistle and stop the dog and have them sit, and then they look at me and wait for further command because you want to be in control of them at all times. And that's the stop command. The next command is a come around command. Basically what that does is has the dog look to me and change direction. So I want them to go 180 degrees from where they were going. Um, when they're puppies or when they're younger, we start out with these drills working them very close to me back and forth. So they work and kind of cover an area of cover um, or they, yeah, they traverse an area of cover back and forth and make sure they, if they're sent there, they're gonna find it. As they get older, they tend to work the patterns where they either find the scent, they know what the scent is, um, but they don't do the tight patterns as much. They more are working scent trails as opposed to me telling them back and forth. But the come around command, if they're heading towards the river and I saw the bird go up this way, or I think there's a nice patch of cover to the right, I'll blow the come, up, come around command and then they'll turn and go that way. The next command is the here command, and this is helpful in the duck water. If they do a long retrieve out in the middle of the lake, um, just sometimes it's dark or they, they might not be able to locate, okay, where's the boat again? And I just go, 
and that means come. And so they'll bring the duck or whatever it is back towards me, and they know to come back. And that's pretty much the whistle means. It's hard. I think uh, partridge rough grouse are my favorite. They're a lot more challenging. Um, there seems to be fewer of them. We see a lot of woodcock. Uh, woodcock hold tight, so there's a lot of closer shooting. Whereas the partridge, uh, they tend, they're pretty wily, and if they've been hunted before, oftentimes they'll flush way ahead of you or right over top of you. And uh, they're just a really pretty bird too. When you, when you actually down one, uh, just their tail feathers, everything. They're just a real colorful, kind of a cool bird. The drumming, uh, I think the partridge really. When I think of fall, I think of a partridge on a log drumming, uh, where they. Uh, uh, to, to attract the females, the males would get on a log and beat their wings to their chest, and it makes kind of a very fast pattern drum noise uh, out in the middle of the woods, and that just means, okay, it's deer season, it's fall, it's hunting season, let's go. It's a rush, a thrill. It's challenging, um, it's energetic. One of the reasons I like it is that uh, just in my day-to-day -day job, I do a lot of sitting down, as most of us do. And so the appeal of going to sit in a deer stand after sitting or working in an office all day is pretty minimal. Um, but knowing that I can go out for an hour or two and pound through brush and walk through over streams, see a lot of the countryside and the woods, explore new areas, uh, it's a lot of fun. And then you get the advantage of going with some dogs that you've trained and watching them uh, find grouse and woodcock, retrieve them, getting some shooting in. So it's just a lot of action and uh, you don't have to be uh, a great shot. We all miss a lot of birds and that's part of the fun, but the one that you finally get, uh, it's a real trophy and you're really proud of that bird and your dogs for doing the work that they do.